Hi everybody, I'd like to introduce our work on developing regularized action policies for smooth control with reinforcement learning. As a quick self-introduction, I'm Sid, and my co-presenter in the session is Basel, who will conduct the second half of this presentation. We are PhD students at Boston University, advised by Professors Kate Sayanko and Renato Mancuso, respectively. Our collaboration focuses largely on using machine learning techniques to learn robust controllers. In this presentation, we cover a tool we developed to improve the robustness of deemed reinforcement learning algorithms-based control. Very briefly, what is RL? RL agents basically learn functions that map input states to output actions. Agents try to learn state-to-action mappings to maximize rewards gain when interacting with an environment. In deep RL, agents are represented by neural networks. RL has seen many applications across a wide range of simulated environments. When working with real hardware, though, we need to be cognizant of the limitations of learned control. One of the key advantages of RL is that it learns to solve problems without too much human intervention. It learns by doing. RL agents can therefore learn to solve complex problems for which it is difficult to design control policies. They can even learn expert or superhuman level behavior. RL does, however, struggle with issues of brittleness when transferring between domains, as it is typically better at memorizing solutions rather than learning to solve general problems. Depending on setup, RL can also be very inconsistent in learning, with each learn policy behaving significantly differently from any other. RL can also learn highly undesirable behavior. The main problem we attempt to address in this work is that of RL learning jerky control. It probably comes as no surprise to any roboticist when I say jerky control is bad. Among the main issues is that it can cause a lot of undesirable wear to actuators and can contribute to significantly increased power consumption. Take, for example, the problem of controlling the simple inverted pendulum. Left to their own devices and without explicit conditioning, RL agents may learn to solve the problem with highly oscillatory behavior, as you see here, where the arrows represent the torque vector of the joint. Consider also the output of a state-of-the-art RL-based attitude controller, trained for the pictured drone, where the plot shows motor actuation over time. Observe that the control signal is highly oscillatory, which results in high current draw and even resulted in motors overheating with sustained use. Problems of control smoothness can severely impact the practical utility of learned controllers. Problems related to smoothness in RL control are of course not new, nor are they uncommon. Here are just a few quotes from past observations. Problems observed range from the overheating and failure of actuators to visible low-frequency oscillations in the actuator control, where in the 2019 work of Malkinov et al., this resulted in quadrotor flight instability. Evidently, RL learning jerky control has been a known problem for some time now. People may try to work around this in practice, but we did not, however, find any works that really address the problem in a general way. Two possible solutions that might immediately come to mind are reward engineering, sometimes called reward shaping, and filtering. First, we briefly touch on the issues of reward engineering. Mainly, the problems center around the fact that reward engineering can be finicky to tune and any one reward function does not really generalize across tasks. Furthermore, recent research on how RL learns to approximate values suggests that the value functions learned are not always good re representations of the true value, and this can be a problem considering that action policies are optimized based on these learned values. Filtering, on the other hand, can lead to control instability with RL, as we'll discuss in the following slides. We start by considering a simple toy problem. We want the RL controller to drive the state, here pictured in purple, to zero, and keep it there while controlling the system velocity. The controller observes the error between the zero state and the current state, that is, the negative of the current state, as well as the velocity. The input response is the current state plus velocity times delta t, where the velocity is adjusted by the controller. For a well-trained agent, this is a problem that can be solved near perfectly. As you can see here, the controller adjusts the system velocity to initially quickly drive the state near zero, and then slows down to stay close to the zero state. In preliminary tests, we found that filtering a trained controller on the aforementioned toy problem could lead to anomalous behavior. We believe that this is likely due to the change in expected state dynamics when compared to the experiences during training. For a well-trained, smooth controller, filtering introduces instability and can even cause a total failure of control, as we see with the finite impulse response filter. If one hoped that filters at least help with noisy learned controllers, it's a similar story, with filters causing unpredictable behavior. Standard tuning techniques didn't quite work for the learned controllers, so filters were instead tuned for reasonable response on a PD controller. 
These issues could be addressed by including a filter in the loop during training, but without also including the corresponding relevant state history, we'd break the Markov assumption. In practice, we noted that this would sometimes result in a total failure to learn. If we were to include the state history, thus preserving the Markov property, we'd be increasing the input dimensionality and therefore learning complexity. And this is all in addition to the fact that filtering will always introduce a delay in the response and just inherently comes with a hit to performance. This is not to say, of course, that filtering can't work. The use of filtering is just something that needs further study in its own right. One of the main reasons for jerky control signals is that control smoothness is not something RL algorithms typically optimize for. Instead of engaging in reward engineering and relying on learned value functions to capture the nuances of action smoothness, we chose instead to target how RL policies are optimized through regularization. Our method is fairly straightforward and can be formulated as two additional loss terms which are introduced into policy optimization. First is temporal smoothness, which tries to ensure that actions taken on any subsequent state are similar to actions taken on the current state. Second is spatial smoothness, which ensures that policies map similar input states to similar actions, thus mitigating issues such as measurement noise or domain gaps. The CAPS criteria are easily introduced to the RL policy optimization for most actor-critic methods. For any octa policy optimization criteria J, on policy pi, and with distance measure D, we introduce the smoothness criteria as weighted loss, using them to constrain the policy optimization. And now I will hand the presentation over to Basel. Thanks, Sid. So, for example, consider control for a simple inverted pendulum. Temporal smoothness here would require that the action output on state st plus 1 should be similar to the action taken on a previous state st. Note, however, that we do not feed the previous state as an input to the network. The optimization is implicit to any internal representation of the state dynamics learned by the network, inherent to the learned function mappings. Spatial smoothness simply requires that actions taken on states in a locally closed region in a state space should be similar. In practice, note the distinct lack of alternating control actions with caps as opposed to without. Again, the arrows represent the torque vector proportional to the policy network's output. On the right here, we have the Fourier transforms for the pendulum example from the previous slide. On the x-axis, we have the different frequency components of the control signal, up to the Nyquist frequency. On the y-axis, we have the signal amplitudes. Note how the policy without caps has more significant high-frequency signal components, which corresponds to the oscillations observed in the control. To get a sense of smoothness, we could visually analyze the behavior of the policy or consider the FFT of the control signal but we also wanted a single number that would give us a good indication of policy smoothness. To this end, we introduced the following smoothness measure, which effectively takes a weighted sum over the amplitudes of the frequency components, weighing higher frequency components higher. Smaller values on this measure thus represent smoother policies. Benchmarked on a number of standard continuous control tasks on OpenAI Gym, we found that we were able to significantly improve policy smoothness without significant negative impact to policy performance, with only slight dips in rewards on about half the cases, but with improved rewards on others. This table and more information on experimental setup and results are available in our full paper. The main problem we wanted to address was that of controlling real actuated systems. In our case, we use a high-performance racing drone as pictured on the left. For reasons of safety, however, we train our agents in simulation. We use the same simulator developed by Coquetel for their work on Neuroflight a previous state-of-the-art framework for training and deploying RL and training control using the Proximal Policy Optimization Algorithm, or PPO. Neuroflight attempted to achieve smooth and accurate control through reward engineering. While Coquetel were able to train smooth controllers in simulation, their trained policy presented with noisy control when transferred to the actual drone. We show here a sample of the current draw, motor signal, and tracking error logs for the drone in flight. We offer the same for a CAPS-optimized agent. Here we compare signals from similar parts of the trajectory for nerve flight and caps. In addition to the significantly smoother motor response, note also the significant reduction in current draw, here nearly 90%, while retaining good tracking performance. In addition to reduced motor usage as shown on the top row, we see similar indications of improved smoothness in the FFTs on the bottom row of this figure which also demonstrates the significant reduction in high-frequency control between neuroflight and CAPS. 
Note as well that agents trained with CAPS are smoother even than a tuned PID controller. We can also show that it's not just the temporal or spatial components of CAPS causing the improvements independently. On its own, temporal smoothing prevents the control from oscillating too much, but it doesn't handle the sim to real transfer as well, thus losing some of the learned smoothness when deploying agents trained in simulation on the real drone. Spatial smoothing, on the other hand, is much better at handling the transfer, but it forces control into these bands in state space, resulting in worse tracking performance. Using these components together, however, CAPS offers smoother control, decent tracking, and better transfer. And this is all reflected in the numbers too. While we do not achieve the same tracking performance as NeuroFlight or PID control, the smoothness of our learned controllers is significantly better, and consequently, so too is the power consumption. It is important to note, however, while CAPS agents do not track as well, they do perform well enough in practice for a stable and responsive flight. So, in conclusion, one of our main observations was that gains in smoothness with CAPS was often highly reliant on the available headroom and system dynamics, though CAPS did always yield smoother control. Improved smoothness, practically, reduces component wear, power consumption, and improves general safety. We also found that the smoothness criteria in CAPS appears to improve the sim to real policy transfer by reducing agent sensitivity to domain shift. For more details, please refer to our paper or our website. Thank you. We will take any questions now.